sight and vision. Matthew chapter 9, verse 27. Going from verse 27 down to verse 31, if you are Bible readers, I'm going to make a couple of references as well to other scriptures. Verse 27, it says, when Jesus departed from there, two blind men followed him, crying out and saying, son of David, have mercy on us. Have mercy on us. And when he had come into the house, the blind men came to him. And Jesus said to them, do you believe that I am able to do this? They said to him, yes, Lord. Uh -huh. Then he touched their eyes, saying, according to your faith, let it be done to you or let it be to you. And their eyes were opened, and Jesus sternly warned them, saying, See that no one knows it. But when they had departed, they spread the news about him in all that country. Before you sit, sit down, if you would, just move over to Mark. Move over to Mark, the next book. Going to go to Mark chapter 8. A little bit of reading this morning. Mark chapter 8, verse 23 through 26. I'm going to start at verse 22. Then he came to, Be to Be Bethesda, Adda, excuse me. And they brought a blind man to him and begged him to touch him. So he took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the town. And when he had spit on his eyes and put his hands on him, he asked him if he saw anything. And he looked up and said, I see men like trees walking. Then he put his hands on his eyes again and made him look up. And he was restored and saw everyone clearly. <laughs> then he sent him away to his house saying, neither go into the town nor tell anyone. One more. If you would, turn back to John chapter 9. John chapter 9. John chapter 9, starting at verse 1. Now as Jesus passed by, he saw a man who was blind from birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, neither this man nor his parents sinned, but that the works of God should be revealed in him. I must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. The night is coming when no one can work. Verse number five, as long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had said these things, he spat on the ground, made clay with the saliva, and he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay. And he said to him, go wash in the pool of Shalom, which is translated scent. So he went and washed and came back seeing. Therefore, the neighbors of those who previously had seen that he was blind said, is not this he who sat and begged, some said, this is he. Others said, he is like him. He said, I am he. I am he. Therefore they said to him, how were your eyes open? And he answered and said, a man called Jesus made clay and anointed my eyes and said to me, go to the pool of Siloam and wash. So I went and washed and I received sight. Then they said to him, where is he? And he said, I do not know. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I know it's a little warm in here. Uh, if you can, you do the best we can. We turn down a little bit. I've given you a boatload 
giving you a boatload of scriptures. And I'm going to work my way back and forth and I'll try to do my best. I'm praying that God gives this, allows me to release this the way he gave it to me. Because I could not shake this. I've been studying this for three weeks now. And it's been hard to navigate between the three scriptures because they're so profound. We've been talking about the difference between vision and sight. And today I want to talk about sight. You, you look at it and you say, well, vision, I told you on the past couple of weeks that vision is always going to include someone else other than yourself, whether you believe it or not. If you have a vision or had a vision about something, it never was just about you. It was always about someone else being tied to what you saw or what you believed that would come to fruition. Sight is about, I'm going to make this plain for you today, sight is about you. Each text that I've read, he makes it known that he is dealing with the individual, whether it's the two blind men in Matthew, or whether it's the one in Mark, or the one in John. He makes it known that he's dealing with them and them alone. What makes these texts so unique is that all three of them are done uniquely and differently from any other. Each person's deliverance is different from the other applications in the Bible. All of us in this room have at some point had something in common with what we were going through. And we found it difficult that one person was delivered this way, another person was delivered that way, another person was delivered this way, and we all seemingly had problems because none of us had our deliverance in common. Yes, sir. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Think about it. Some of us who have, who have lied, some people have forgiven us. Some of us that have lied to other folk, those folk won't even talk to you. Right. Some of us have lied and some of us have lost our jobs. Some of us who have lied, some people still consider you to be a liar. Some of us who have lied to others, some people don't even know about the lie you even told. It is just kept between you and that person. Others know about the lie and the other person that you told, told a lie on don't even care about it, but everybody else around that person cares about the lie. So we're going to talk about what's the difference. God is letting us know that before I can give you a vision, I got to give you sight. I got to allow you to see you first. What these three texts have in common is God is purposely showing us that he's specifically looking at the individual. How do you know it? Because in Habakkuk, we, he says, write the vision, make it plain on tablets. So when they read it, they will run. In these three texts that I read, he, in each case, he either told them to not go back. He either told them not to say nothing. He said, and I, matter of fact, I'm emphatic. Don't you tell anybody what I just did. And there's a reason why he does it. He's specific in why he does it. In Matthew, it is amazing to me because it's two blind men who follow him after he has performed a resurrection on a young girl. Y'all read the Bible. It says that they are following him and both of them are blind. Both of them. They're blind. And they're following him. They know that Jesus is close. And they believe that their deliverance is tied to him. They've heard they can't see him. But they know he's close. <laughs> This passage says that they cry out to him and they ask him to have mercy. Why would they ask him to have mercy? The implication of this scripture doesn't say so, but I can almost in my own mind say in other applications that we'll discuss, maybe not all of them today, but in this one, when they ask to have mercy, right away I gravitate to, did they do something to cause their own blindness? Mm. Did they do something to cause their own inability to see themselves, to see their own lives? 
What this is, this is more than just about being blind. And that's what I want to get to you today is this is more than just being blind. This is more than just a, a Bible scripture about not being able to see. Yes, this is actually a not being able to see yourself. Yeah. Not being able to see your way out. Mm -hmm. Not being able to see your breakthrough. Not being able to see your deliverance. Not, to be, not being able to see that God is blessing you. Right in the middle of being blessed, you still don't know you're blessed. Mm -hmm. Right in the middle of God honoring you, you don't know that you're being honored. Matter of fact, you continue to not see it because you believe that everybody else has it better than you. In this case, the two men demonstrate something that you will see that is different from the other two applications, which is they demonstrate faith. Jesus doesn't have to have to beg for them to come. He doesn't have to ask them anything. They're following him. And the Bible says in Matthew that when he gets into a house, it doesn't say whose house that, that he goes into. I find that intriguing because they're willing to follow him anywhere, regardless of whose house it is. We're going to gain access because we believe that in order for us to see again, I got to get access even if you don't invite me in. I'm coming in. Some of us are not that relentless about what God is doing in our own lives that we don't purpose to really pursue him. Hmm. These two blind men, not one, two, which mean they both know each other. They know each. They know what each other's needs are. They know it, what each other are thinking. They know exactly what, what they want to do. They know exactly how to go. They know how to communicate. They know how to navigate. They know how to do everything. In this scripture, it is amazing that they're blind and they're following after him. We will see three different types of people. We will see three different types. In Matthew, we'll see the two blind men follow Jesus. In Mark, we'll see the people take the blind man to Jesus. And then in Mark, I mean, excuse me, in John, in John chapter 9, you'll see Jesus will see the blind man. Hmm. Y'all, it's when they see him, when you see Jesus for them, and when Jesus sees you. Y'all get that? Mm -hmm. Three applications. When they see him and pursue him, mm -hmm. when they see him and pursue him, and when a group of people See Jesus for the blind man, take the blind man to Jesus, and then when Jesus sees the blind man. And we often get them all mixed up. Each one of them is different and unique in its own way. Each one. If you read it, it would blow your mind if you sit and you meditate and you say, you got two blind men that even when they are before Jesus, they understand for, for whatever it's worth, that it is absolutely necessary that I gain access to him. In, in, in Matthew, he asked them if they believe. All he does, he says, do you believe that I am able to do this? That's all he asks. In the other applications, he has to do something else. But in this one, he says, do you believe that I am able? And they say, yes. And all he does is touch their eyes. Mm -hmm. Just based on a touch. Just a touch. Mm -hmm. They walk away. Mm -hmm. Seeing. And he instructs them, how do you know that this is about just you? Because what he says at the end in verse, in verse 30 to 31, he says, and their eyes were open. Mm -hmm. And Jesus sternly warned them. Saying, see that no one knows it. But when they had departed, they spread the news about him in all that country. Sometimes what God does, these are the people where Jesus again is saying, I'm going to do this for you, but I want you to keep this to yourself. Why is it that he would bless you and tell you to keep it to yourself? 
because people know you. And you know that they have a greater impact and influence over your life. And we are so eager to share what God has done that we would go out and share it to the people who really don't want us to see. Yeah. <laughs> what calls us that when wow. we show up and tell them, guess what Jesus has done? He healed me. Oh, you can't see. Get out of here. No, I can see. Now, really, you really can't see. Now, now y'all think about this. Those of you who are sitting here and you have gone through some illness and you are asking God to heal you and you know you start feeling better, mm -hmm. right? You start feeling better yeah. and you call somebody and you say, you say, I feel healed. God has healed me. <laughs> I feel God. And then they go, I don't know. You know, my mama had that surgery. And, you know, when she she didn't make it. Oh, she matter of fact, she started feeling good and the next day she died. Wow. <laughs> they will do it. On that purpose alone, you would reach back out and you would grab the illness and pull it back. You pull it back because now somebody's telling you what has happened to what they know mm -hmm. can happen. Y'all know, okay. Uh, uh, for those of you in here, again, seeing if you're in debt, you can't see your way out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Jesus telling you to tithe and to give, and he's telling another person to pay your bills. Just pay your bills on time. I'm going to get you out of debt. Another one he's saying, don't pay anything. I got you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh. Mm -hmm. You're going to find out in all three cases, see, what we do is we liken our wholeness and deliverance based on what the next person is saying. Mm -hmm. How you've been delivered. Y'all know this, okay. You go buy a new car tomorrow and you get a good deal on the car lot. Mm -hmm. You pick up the phone and you call, I call Brother Durrell, hey man, you got to go see this salesman. This guy's going to hook you up. Mm -hmm. I walked away and my payment is $120 a month. Darrell goes to the guy and he walks out there and the guy's like, well, you know, uh, uh, yeah, I, I got you, but, you know, your payment's going to be 600 <laughs> He gets mad because, man, you told me I was going to get the hookup. I didn't tell him that the salesman told me, hey, man, I'm going to hook you up, but don't tell nobody. All right now. Why is that? Because he's saying, I'm going to make an exception yes, to sir. you. Yeah. This doesn't apply to everybody else. Speak well. And Speak. what this guy does is he, Jesus tells both of them, two, who can reaffirm and confirm, don't say nothing to nobody. Mm -hmm. He said, keep our mouth closed. Matter of fact, ooh, thank you. He said, when you don't tell nobody, mm. continue to act like you blind. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> He's telling these two, don't tell nobody. Matter of fact, he stands firm and he says he's emphatic. Do not say a word. He's not saying it because of he wants to, oh, don't tell nobody I did it. You know, and then like, call back and say, hey, so did they say anything about me healing the, the two men? <laughs> he's emphatic because he's saying, look, I'm doing this for you. This is about you now. In order for you to get beyond sight and to see beyond yourself, I need you to see you and embrace who you are. Mm -hmm. Don't just have a vision about what you want to accomplish, but I want you to see who you are. Mm -hmm. Everybody's going to talk about what you can do and what we can do with this and, and how things are going to get big, and all. but I want you to see you. Mm -hmm. This is what we're going to talk about for the next couple of weeks. Is what happens when you don't have sight. Mm. Not when you don't have vision. We know the Bible says where there is no vision, the people. The people perish. Not the person. Come on. Yes. The people. Uh -huh. The people perish. Yeah. So whenever somebody says, oh yeah, my vision, I got a vision. God gave me a vision. Then I got a Mercedes and I got a new house. No, -uh, that ain't a vision. Mm -hmm. That's sight. All right. uh -huh. That's when you see you. A vision incorporates people outside of you. Yes. Yeah. Jesus is saying, look, I'm going to do this because you've been following me. Matter of fact, you're going to just invite yourself up in somebody else's house. Mm -hmm. And you are saying, have mercy. 
Lord, have son of David, have mercy. He says, oh, they got faith. He don't have to go through no hoops and, you know, in this text, he ain't spitting on nobody. He's not spitting in the clay, making spitting in the dirt, making clay. He says, oh, they really believe that I can do this. That's why in, 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 in the body of Christ, what we experience is how some have the gift of faith where God can do something and it happens and they believe it. Then the others who struggle. You know, I told y'all, I said, look, when, when they can follow Jesus, then we will find out in the other application where you can't even see for yourself. But everybody around you can see for you. But you don't believe what they see. When I see your success, when I see your deliverance, when I see you being made whole, but you can't see it yourself. Mm -hmm. Y'all you, know, somebody keeps telling you, you know, you can make it, you can do it. And you keep saying, oh, no, I, don't, I can't, I can't, I can't do it. I can't, I just, I just, can't. yeah, you can do it. This is, this is what typifies that, that text. That text in Mark typifies the people around who say, I see the God, that God wants to work in your life and you can do it. Let's just go to Jesus. Let's just go to him in prayer. I don't feel like praying. I don't, I don't, I don't want to pray. These are the folk, you know, we, 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 we call them intercessors. Y'all don't know it, but y'all are intercessors. When you see something that they don't see, when I see something, you know, I'm, I'm watching Brother Darrell right now who has a boot on his leg. Brother Darrell is purposely walking with a boot on his leg. Now, he has a fracture. Brother Darrell could be at home right now with his leg propped up. <laughs> I got to have this on for six weeks. I'm not going to walk. I'm not going to be able to. Matter of fact, I can't go to work. I can't do nothing. But Brother Darrell, <coughs> based on the instructions, and based on his faith on knowing, he knows mm -hmm. that if he wears this boot mm -hmm. for six weeks, he'll be healed. Mm -hmm. Y'all just missed that. See, That's oftentimes good. what we want is we want instant healing. Yeah. Right. When in fact, he needs the process. Mm -hmm. In order for him to be healed, his ankles got to be stabilized. Mm -hmm. It's got to be immobile. Mm -hmm. And he's got to submit to it. Yeah. He's got to be willing to submit to being immobile. Yeah. Many of us, we're mad at God because God ain't coming to our rescue when God is just saying, wait. wait. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Don't move. Mm. Don't budge. All right, now. Stabilize mm. right there. Now, that don't mean don't do nothing. Right. When he says stay at home, you, you know, we think about, you know, you think about you're not getting your way. And all of us have this propensity to do this, where we, things are not working out. And what we do is we pout. You know, we start to pout. <laughs> and what we do is we start to jump on God. When God is, in fact, saying, look, for you, I know you watched your homeboy or your, your girlfriend or your friend. You watched me do mighty acts in their life, mm. and you think that I owe it to you to do the same mm. thing. All right. And John, the, the disciple said of this one, okay, why is he blind? Why was he born blind? Right. Is it that his parents, did his mother and father do something? Why? It's at this case that Jesus said that that again, that his father may be glorified, I meant must do the works of him. While it is day. He's saying, so this one I'm going to demonstrate so that they know that I'm Jesus. So he'll take one and say, I'm going to do this one on you because I want your family members who don't believe that Jesus is real. I'm going to do this miraculous work on you and you won't have to go through the process. And then on this one, because you knew better, you knew you shouldn't have been messing with it. You knew you shouldn't have been doing it, but I'm going to have mercy on you. Now, mercy, y'all, mercy says that you don't get what you deserve. Mm -hmm. The punish doesn't mean you don't get no punishment. It just says you don't get it exacted 
what you really deserve. That means if you deserve 20 years, mercy says I'll give you 10. Mm -hmm. Am I right? Mm -hmm. What we don't like is God to bless our brother and sister mm -hmm. with miraculous works. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, we get upset. Y'all, I'll use this as an example. I, I, I know I shouldn't say this, but I would, I would love to win the lottery. <laughs> because yeah, have y'all ever done this where, 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 where when you sit and you think about if I win the lottery, I can pay for this, I can do this, I can, I give my family this, and I'll, I'll do, I'll do all of this, and then you, you know, God, you know, you can trust me with these millions, <laughs> forty-five million dollars. If you give me forty-five million, better yet, now it's like two hundred million. God, you know I bless the church, I bless you. And God is like, no, 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 no. God moves way out to somewhere, out in Delaware somewhere, and walks up to somebody and says, I'm just going to bless your life. I'm going to give it to you. And we say, God, now I'm sitting here struggling to pay my life bill. And you, I'm one of yours, and you won't even give me. You can give me, and you know, we do this. You know, you own cattle on Thousand Hill, and you can do all of these things. It's like, yeah, I do own cattle on Thousand Hill, but you are on that hill too. <laughs> you own the hill, and I do what I want to do. God is demonstrating that what I do for you, I'm gonna do for him, for them. But it's, the process is gonna be different, and then what I'm gonna do for them. The process is gonna be different, uh -huh. but you all are gonna understand that what I'm doing, I'm still God. Yes, Lord. These men, these two men, they have the faith, and he said, "That's all I need." And he touches their eyes, and they're healed. That's they walk away, and they start testifying. When he said, "Don't tell nobody," mm -hmm. and in in us. We encourage each other, tell what the Lord has done. All you got to tell. In this case, he said, shut your mouth. Right. <laughs> In this case, he says, keep it quiet. But y'all, this is, this, is this is not a special circumstance. Because in the others, he does the same in a different way. He's still telling them not to say nothing, but he does it differently. In one, he leads outside of town to heal. I'll get to that. I don't want to get to the details on it. He leads him outside of town to heal him and tells him, don't even go back. What does that say? Where you were was causing your blindness. Where you are is causing you to be blind. What does that say about you right now? You've been blind for 10 years. He, oh, God, heal me. Oh, heal me, Lord, heal me. In 10 years, you're still around the same people, certain circumstance, doing the same thing and wondering why you can't see. Yeah. Sometimes Jesus got to take you by your hand and lead you out of your circumstance. Y'all yeah, yeah. know this. Come on, come on. Some of us know this. Now we talk about this now. We talk about it right here now. Some of us know we've been in some relationships that we should not have been in. We couldn't even see ourselves. I'm not talking about married. I'm not talking boyfriend, girlfriend, some friendships. There are some friendships that we relied on and trusted people to give us the best that they had. Little did we know they were setting us up because they wanted the best that we had. And we weren't getting nothing out of the deal. Mm -hmm. yes, and we, oh God, oh they're my friend, I got to be there for them. And you emptying out, mm -hmm. emptying out. Yes. Mm -hmm. Little do you know you just causing your own blindness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right yeah, yeah, that's like, I want to see it. You sticking yourself in the eye with a pen every time you hang around with these people. <laughs> <laughs> you causing yourself your own pain. And God is saying, I need you to cut them. I need you to cut them off. Mm -hmm. Sever them ties. Yeah. These two men are saying, have mercy. Why are they saying have mercy? Because we've contributed to our own blindness. Mm -hmm. We knew better. Mm -hmm. They wasn't going to just give up on God and just run the opposite way. Well, oh, well, he's gone now. Well, we just continue to be blind. That's amazing that they were able to follow him in their blindness. What does that say about us? Mm -hmm. uh, that even in our state of being blind, that we can still find our way. They're showing us we can still navigate our way to, 
to, to, to Jesus, but we refuse to do so. Mm -hmm. uh, Y'all know we do what we want. I, you know, I'm growing up in Vegas, you know, we would see some of everything because when we were little, you know, church forbade us to gamble. Gambling was like, oh, that is like the cardinal sin. Mm -hmm. And living in Vegas, so we didn't we did not not go to the casino because they said not to go. But we weren't really drawn to the casino because we saw the residual of what happened with people who went to the casino. Mm -hmm. When you live in Las Vegas, you see people gamble away their life savings and then stand out on the corner and just say, hey, can I just have $20 to just get to the gas station? I, 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 I threw away every, or if you can just give me $40, I promise I gotta feed my family and get back home because I, I gambled all the way my money and my wife don't even know. It's amazing that being able to see that, that people don't know that right in smack dab in Las Vegas, you got people who live there that can see and people who don't live there that can't see. All right. You in it and you can see. But even in that, in Vegas, the people who can see are also blind. Mm -hmm. Because they believe that they're trapped mm -hmm. in a place that all that the world has to be gambling. It has to be limelights. It has to be, it has to be being on the strip. Vegas gives you this persona of this is all there is, and the world is the same as it is. So when people who normally live in Las Vegas, I'll give y'all this secret, when they leave and they go visit somewhere else and they've never been outside of Vegas, they're shocked because they think everything is open 24 hours a day. <laughs> what am I saying? See, we in church, we can't see outside of church. The world is evolving, and we can't see ourselves outside of church. We're only relevant in church. Oh. I'm only relevant when I'm here. If you take me out of my element, I'm blind. Mm -hmm. I go out there, I don't know how to love nobody other than the people that act like me, talk like me, sing like me, dance like me, dress like me. I don't love you. Mercy. But if you come in here, oh, God bless you. Oh, yeah. praise God. Oh, oh, I'm so glad to see you. Still blind. Mm, right. uh, God going to pull the scales off all our eyes all right, at the gay church. Mm. Because we're we going to find out that the work is not in here. All right. The it. work is out yes, there. Yes, yes. So if we're talking about love in here, ain't that love to stick in your back pocket or in your purse and in your pocket to walk outside to demonstrate that love out there? If we're talking about forgiveness, we're not talking about, I can forgive you because, hey, you my brother, you know, you, you my man, oh man, I love you, oh yeah, we're going to hang out, but will I do it out there? Hmm. Right. Am I going to be able to demonstrate to them out there that God is a forgiving God, that hmm. he's a healing God, he can set you free, he can make all things new, yeah. or do you have to be in here in order for him to do it? Hmm. Do you have to be a member here to do it? No, we're going to legitimize this whole thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're going to find out next week. Yeah, wow. Next week, we're going to talk about the people who lead folks to Jesus, mm -hmm. who have your best interests, but you ain't paying them no attention. Mm -hmm. Y'all know the ones that tell you just like it is. But you get mad at them and cut them off because they told you that your breath stank <laughs> when you know you didn't brush your teeth that much. <laughs> I'm talking to somebody. <laughs> y'all, y'all, come on, y'all know. We get offended if you walk up and you say, uh, "You, you, what are you doing? How come you're not paying your bills? You calling me and you borrowing money from me all the time?" Why aren't you paying your bills? Y'all know it's got to be the closest ones that say, come on, man. Every time I look up, you want $5. Mm -hmm. But you're working on the same job I'm working on. Mm -hmm. But we won't say nothing. Ah, oh, well, I don't want to hurt their feelings. You know, I, what they need is they need that one that's going to say, mm -hmm. come on now. You, you. Let me see. The only child in here, the only child is Jay. Jay, Jay ain't no child. <laughs> Y'all know when people's lives don't measure up. Y'all know, we know, 
And sometimes the people that are closest to us will tell us, you know what you're doing ain't right. Mm -hmm. You know you married mm -hmm. and you talking to him. You know you married and you talking to her. Come on now, let's, come on man. See, those are the relationships that we don't yeah. embrace. Mm -hmm. Those are the ones that should be, if you, look, if y'all got my permission, if you see me out in the street and you think that I'm with somebody other than my wife and you don't know that that's my sister or whatever, look, you need to walk up and introduce yourself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I just said something. <laughs> I just said something. If you see me, I'm your pastor, right? If you see me, don't walk by, keep, who is that? And then you pick up the phone and you call. And you say, I thought I saw a pastor with somebody. I told y'all, see me, me, and, me and Sister Christy go to the movies together. Brother-in-law, sister-in-law. How many people y'all think have maybe seen me and her together and go, Hey, brother and sister-in-law, what are you doing out on a day? <laughs> you think I don't think about it? But I'm like, this is my sister. You think I'm just going to be hanging out in McKinney with my sister, and I'm like. <laughs> but if you see me and you wonder if you care about me, right. walk up to me and say, hey, how you doing? Hey. You will know by our response. If it's legit, if, oh, hey, how you doing, y'all? Not going about my business. Then you can't say, oh, he out here, and he, his wife at home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can appreciate it saying, well, who is this? Oh, yeah, this is my sister-in-law. Nip that in the bud. I would rather you confront me in public than to go behind my back and think that I'm doing something that I should, I don't even know why I just went off that way. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm like four-wheeling now. <laughs> I done got off the surface and I'm four-wheeling now. I'm just, God is, God, God is this. I'm, I'm done. I'm going to say this. In the next couple weeks, I'm going to pair up the next two texts. That's why I read them today. You go home and you read it. Because when I talk about it, I want you to know what I'm talking about. All right. That's Matthew chapter 9, Mark chapter 8, John chapter 9. Specifically about the blind men. When you, you can read the entire text, it's good for your heart to read the entire text. But when you get to the blind man, know the difference between the three. But know that they're all the same. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My deliverance, your deliverance, their deliverance. It's all the same. And they're tailor-made for us. His deliverance is tailor-made. It's you didn't make it, he made it. Y'all, I sense this now because those who are dealing with an illness or pain or discomfort now, and you've been praying and asking God to deliver you, he, he wants to deliver you, but you got to know how he's going to do it. You got to know what the deliverance looks like. Because somebody's going to come to you and tell you, you ain't healed yet. You may as well, if I was you, I would just go on and just, you know, just, don't even worry about it. Just, 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 live, just live the way you live it. How about them blind folk that, that people said you'll never see again? But you can be made whole. You can be made to see your own self, your own life, your own wellness, your own deliverance, your own peace, your own wholeness, your own hope, your own joy. Some of us don't even see our own joy because we're sad all the time. Amen. 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 Stand to your feet.